G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is the easiest way to solve any question involving fractions, be they addition questions, subtraction questions, multiplication questions, or division questions. And we are gonna go through and have a look at all of these. There's gonna be a bit to go through, so please bear with us, but these are going to be the easiest way of solving any questions involving fractions. So we're gonna start with addition questions. There's gonna be about three types of questions you'll get with these. The first is where we have the same denominator. Questions like this one here. Say for instance, you are asking to add one fifth plus two fifths. Now, what you're going to notice straight away is that we have the same bottom number, the same denominator. If this is the case, what we do for our answer is we keep that same denominator. So in this case, the denominator is five. For our answer, the denominator will also be five. Now, for the numerator, the top number, all we do is we just go through and add. One plus two is equal to three. And that's how you add fractions with like denominators, with the same denominator. Keep that denominator in your answer and just add the numerators, add those top numbers together. But what about where we have different denominators? A question like this one here. Say we had one quarter and to this we wanted to add two thirds. Now the easiest way to do this is we're going to find a common denominator between the four and the three here. We have two different denominators and we're going to find a common denominator. The easiest way to do that is through a bit of multiplication. First thing we do is we're going to multiply these denominators together. So four times three, that gives us the answer of 12. That gives us the denominator of our answer, which is 12. Now what we're going to do is starting at the top left here, we're going to multiply by the bottom right of these fractions here. So one, multiplied by three. One multiplied by three is equal to three. What you're going to notice is we've multiplied the four by three and the three by three, so we've kept these fractions equivalent. Now what we're going to do is moving over to the right here, we're going to start with the top right number here, the two, and multiply it by the bottom left number here. Two multiplied by four is equal to eight. Once again, this just keeps the fractions equivalent. We're adding, so we're just going to go three plus eight this gives us our answer, 11 over 12. Now, that's the second type of question. What about we have a look at a third type of question? And that's this one here, where we have mixed numbers. Something like one and a half plus four and two thirds. How we would go through and solve this. Now, the way we do this is fairly simple. We're going to just turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions. That is, just where they're simply fractions, but this is going to be a bigger number than the bottom number, you'll see what I mean. So let's do this. The way we do this is as follows. We're gonna keep the same bottom numbers, the same denominators here. So we're gonna have a two and we're going to have a three. All right, and we're going to be adding still, but what's going to go on the top? Well, we get this as follows. First off, we're gonna multiply the whole number by the denominator. We have one times two, which is equal to two, and then we add that numerator. So one times two is two, plus one is equal to three. So we have three halves in one and a half. Now for four and two thirds, we do the same process. Four times three is equal to 12, plus two is equal to 14. There you go. We have 14 thirds all together. Now what we're going to do is we're simply going to go through and do the same process we did for this second fraction set here. So let's do that. First off, we had two times three. This gives us the denominator, two threes, a six. Now what we do is we're going to multiply three by three, to give us nine, and we have 14 times two, which gives us 28. We're adding, so let's add those together. Nine plus 28 gives us 37. So we have 37 sixths as our answer. But don't ever just leave this answer like this or your math teacher will be really annoyed at you. They're going to ask you to simplify this further. Now, how do we simplify this? Simple. This means 37 divided by six. Any fraction, even if it's this one here, means three divided by five, 11 divided by 12. And this one means 37 divided by six. So let's just do that, 37 divided by six. Well, six six is a 36, so the answer is going to be six, and there is one left over. This one goes over that six at that same denominator there. Cool, that's how you go through and you add any fraction together. Now you can probably guess how to subtract because it's a very similar process. So let's have a look. So when we're subtracting fractions, the process is very similar to addition. We're going to start off with a nice easy question, say seven over eight minus one over eight. You should be able to get that one straight away. What do you think it is? Ah, you've got it. Seven minus one is six, and that 
bottom number, the denominator stays the same. It's six eighths. We can simplify this a bit further because we look for a number that goes into both the top and the bottom. Two goes into both the top and the bottom. So six divided by two is equal to three and eight divided by two is equal to four. That's just a simplified version, equivalent version of six over eight. What about if we have a different denominator? Say we have something like this. Say we have uh, four over five and from this I want to subtract one third. Okay, I think you can guess how we're going to do this. Uh, to get the bottom number, we multiply. Five times three is equal to 15. Now we do that cross multiplication, that the cross, uh, cross working out four times three is equal to 12. One times five is equal to five. We are subtracting. 12 subtract five, our answer is seven. Really simple, right? Okay, what about the mixed number here? So say we have something like, uh, let's go three and one third, and from this I wish to subtract. Uh, let's go two and a quarter and see how this goes. So with this, the first thing we have to do is turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions, the same way as before. This is going to be a number over three, and this is going to be a number over four, and we are going to be subtracting. So let's do that. Uh, three times three, is nine plus one is 10. Two times four is eight plus one is nine. Now what we're going to do is that same cross fraction -y sort of thing that we did over here. Okay, so let's do that. Three times four is equal to 12. And now we're going to do this bit of working out. 10 times four is equal to 40. Three times nine is equal to 27. We're subtracting 40 take away 27 is equal to 13. All right, can we leave it like that? You've got it. This is an improper fraction. We're gonna to have to change it. So let's do that. 13 divided by 12 is equal to one, and there's one left over. That's one over 12. Cool, now let's have a look at multiplying fractions. All right, so multiplying fractions is nice and easy. I think it's the easiest operation you can do with fractions. I remember as a kid, my brother told me this, and it's always stuck with me and always helped me when I was trying to remember how to multiply fractions. Uh, he remember he told me when I was very little, I wasn't at school yet, that a half multiplied by a half is equal to one quarter. Now, I always thought that was a little bit strange, you know? How did you multiply by something and get a smaller number? All right, novelty value aside, it did help me to remember this, and it makes perfect sense, because what's a one half of a half? Another way of thinking of this, a half of a half, well, if you think of that with a pizza, for instance, or a pie, you cut that in half, you have half a pizza, and then half of that is one quarter of a pizza, right? All up, we have one quarter. A half of a half is equal to a quarter, all right? So the way that we do this, uh, it's not just to remember my uh, little childhood stories. Just have a look at this. One multiplied by one is equal to one. Two multiplied by two is equal to four. Top by the top, bottom by the bottom, Got your answer, happy days. So let me give you a harder question here. So say for instance, we wanted to go, uh, what's three quarters multiplied by uh, one third? Okay, nice and simple. Three times one is equal to three. Four times three is equal to 12. Uh, now, that's our answer, but we can simplify this further into an equivalent fraction that's uh, you know, a bit smaller because there's a three that goes into both the top and the bottom. Divide by three, divide by three, we get one over four. Our answer is one quarter. Cool. Now, just one last thing. What do we do if we have a whole number? Well, if we have a mixed number before, we, we do the same like we did before. There's nothing major there. But I'll in particular want to show you something like this. Say, for instance, I wanted to know what half multiplied by seven was. Now, the easiest way to deal with this is as follows. We're going to keep that half the same, and we're multiplying by this seven, which we're going to turn into a fraction. Now, this is a fraction is equal to 7 over 1, all right? Makes sense, because 7 divided by 1 is equal to 7, all right? This is 7 as a fraction. Now, we can go through and solve this really easy, right? 1 times 7 is 7. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. We can simplify this. 7 divided by 2 is equal to 3, uh, and there's 1 left over. That's 3 and a half. What's half of 7? Well, of course, it's 3 and a half, right? <laughs> All right, so now let's go have a look at division. So now we're going to have a look at dividing fractions, and these are really easy to do as long as you remember that division is the opposite of multiplication. Now, multiplication was pretty easy. 
So there's just one extra step we need to do to turn it into the opposite. So let's do that. Um, first off, let's get a question up here. Uh, we have something like uh, this one here, three quarters, and I want to divide into this one half. I want to see how many halves are in three quarters. All right, so as I said, the opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to rewrite this out a little bit. Three quarters, and we're going to be multiplying. But we're not going to be multiplying by a half. We're going to be multiplying by the opposite of a half. Now, the opposite of a half, well, if you get this whole fraction here and you flip it on its head, if you flip these around, you get the opposite of one half. You have two over one. Okay, now we've just turned it into a nice, easy multiplication. So let's do that. Three times two is equal to six. Four times one is equal to four. We have six over four, which is equal to, uh, that's one and two left over, two, four. And we can simplify this further because two goes into both the top and the bottom. This is equal to one and a half. Simple, right? Now, what do we do if we have a whole number here? Well, no surprise here. Say I wanted to go, what is four fifths? And I want to divide that by six, okay? <laughs> what would that equal? Uh, we're just going to do that same process here. We have four fifths, and this is divided by six over one. Now, we don't want to be dividing. We want to do a bit of multiplication here, so let's just change this around. We have four fifths, and we're going to multiply by one over six. So let's do that. Now, what we have is four times one is equal to four, and five times six is equal to 30. And we can simplify this because two goes into both the top and the bottom. We have two over 15. And there is our answer. That's how you go through and you divide with fractions. Anyway, that's the four operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division as they go with fractions. Now, I hope that was of some help. If it was, please remember, write something lovely in the comments and leave us a thumbs up. If it wasn't, Write something less lovely in the comments and, and still go through and give us a thumbs up. If you wish to support the Tech Math channel, well, that's greatly appreciated. You can do that just by leaving a comment or even just uh, saying something nice and uh, leaving a thumbs up. But you can also become a patron if you wish. There is a link in the description if you wish to support the Tech Math channel. A big shout out to my patrons. Your support is always greatly appreciated. Anyway, that is that and that is all. I will see you next time. Bye.